Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our final conversation this morning is, uh, of course, uh, moving to incidents concerning Sunday Adeyemo. The Department of uh, State Services has stated that uh, 13 persons were arrested in a raid in his house two nights ago. Um, well, last night, actually. And, of course, uh, arms, ammunition and charms and some other things were uh, also uh, found at his residence. Uh, videos, of course, have also been put on the internet showing, you know, the um, you know uh, aftermath of that raid. His vehicles destroyed, blood and and um, uh, blood stains on the floor, both in and outside the house. This morning, we're speaking with uh, Babashola Kuti, uh, who's uh, joining us to share his thoughts all the way from uh, the UK. Good morning, thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning, thanks for having me. Good morning. Me. All right, let's first get your reaction to this, uh, the raid, and of course uh, the statement from the DSS. Is there any part of uh, this conversation that, you know, immediately triggers you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know the funny thing, I'm actually shocked that the DSS carried out this raid because when I first saw the pictures and the videos circulating, uh, I actually honestly thought it was a spoof, that Sunday was just uh, being mischievous. Because the level of destruction uh, of his property uh, was just, it was almost like vandalization. I mean, a professional organization like the DSS ordinarily should do its job without resulting to this level of destruction. Uh, breaking cars, I mean, that has no bearing on the issue. If you declare somebody wanted, uh, then I think you should go in and make an arrest. And if you can't find that person, you, you go about your business, not to destroy the property and vandalize. And uh, although now that I'm reading the press statement, I'm um, seeing that they, they they did claim that there was a shootout at the at the residence. And if that was the case, the, the DSS well had the right to defend itself. But because there's a lack of trust for the current administration, I think it, the people would then question if that really happened or if it was just a show of force. Okay, so another issue here that people have complained about is how Nigeria's law enforcement agencies approach, you know, secessionists, approach yes. people who have differing views from the government. And uh, we yes. can consider cases uh, such as Omo Yelishore, who has been, you know, calling for a revolution now, how he's been treated, how he's been arrested multiple times. The last one that occurred uh, a few weeks ago where it was said that a, 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 a tear gas canister was shot at him and he sustained an injury, mm -hmm. the invasion of Nandikanu's Nandi house, and this one that occurred around 2 a.m. today. So um, what's going to be your assessment of Nigeria's law enforcement agencies and especially the DSS regarding how they approach um, people who have, you know, different views about what Nigeria as a state should be? Well, I, I think we should separate some issues first. Um, I wouldn't put Omar Yerisha right in the same category as Sunday Bo and Namikan. First of all, we, have, we need to separate that and be, you know, to be, you know, frankly, you know, frank with, with you. Um, Omar Yerisha is asking for a revolution to change you know the way things are done in government to possibly change government as well he's not asking for secession he's not bearing arms uh he's not asking people to be shot at uh he's not driving people from a particular part of the country uh, you know you know armed you know so we have to separate those two issues Omar is agitating for something completely different. And he's doing it in a peaceful manner. So he should never be harassed, to be honest. I mean, if the DSS does have issues, I mean, Inam Dikano, we know that, uh, started an ESN network, which is obviously asking um, non-regulated people to bear arms. So they go. also, we know that he is known to have been, you know, carrying arms as well, uh, on licensed arms. So as far as I'm concerned, they're two separate things. but. Even that being said, the I mean the police we've had we, we've known you know with the end South protests we've had all those issues. Uh, the military slightly more professional, but the DSS for me is the biggest disappointment. I read the press statement this morning, and the last two paragraphs just you know just show exactly how the government is thinking, because the leadership itself, the language that leadership speaks, is a very careless, flippant language. It doesn't carry the people along. So essentially, um, they are turning these characters into heroes. And for me, I think, you know, I mean, it's going to take a long time for people to be able to trust 
these these authorities, you know, once this government does leave power. Well, you know, something that you know, I would ask, you know, and I made mention of this earlier is, should the DSS have even carried out the raid in the first place without a court warrant, without declaring him wanted, without inviting him for questioning for whatever it is that he's exactly. been invited uh, for? Because, you know, from what it seems now, there's still no actual charge or reason behind the raid. Uh, so, so share your thoughts on that one, uh, because we, we seem to have gotten used to a system where some of these things happen and we make excuses. If you remember in 2015, there was a raid on judges' houses at night, also at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., and Nigerians found an excuse for it and gave, you know, whatever reasons. There were then stories of, uh, you know, dollars and foreign currency found in their, in their houses and some of all of that. To date, none of those judges has been found guilty of anything. Exactly. So should the DSS have been in um, Sunday Boho's residence in the first place? They shouldn't have been. That's the truth. Um, unless they, they can tell us, produce a court order saying that they, they, they have a warrant for his arrest. Uh, you know, again, we are back to our batch And I'm sorry to say that, but this is what it looks like. But the, the actors in this government are also a batch boys. So um, I'm not surprised about what is going on. I think... You know, the, 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 the law keepers are actually lawless. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that because it shows that there's a disregard for the constitution, for the rule of law, and for democracy in general. I mean, if somebody go out committed a crime, the appropriate thing was to approach a court and get a warrant for his arrest. And then, if you can't find him, say we, we declare him wanted and you're looking for him, but you go to his house in the middle of the night and engage in it. In what order to, to be a bloody shootout, then the destruction of property. I mean, look, I tell you what, in the UK here, if a police if the police raid your house while you're not in or they break down your door, they will get a locksmith before they leave to fix that door. You know, so imagine you know the level of destruction to cars and to the entire building and you know shooting people. And you know, we cannot tell you for sure if people were actually shooting back or if the DSA just went there knowing something goes reputation and open fire on, on innocent people. We, we don't know what happened. I'm also surprised that, you know, a couple of days later, we still don't know the names of the people that died. You know, it's, you know, little things like that. And if the DSA actually took those bodies away from there, where did they take them to? There's so many things, so many questions that need to be, to be asked so, so and then, answered as well. Oh, so seeing the character of Nigeria's security agencies, especially the DSS, many analysts have described them as irresponsible and very unprofessional. Do you think they will take responsibility for, you know, replacing everything that they damaged? And when we even begin to talk about prosecution for, you know, the people that were killed, are those even going to come up, you know, on the national level? I, I think I think they should, and this is where you know I have a problem with the National Assembly because something like this has happened, and immediately there should be people talking about it at a higher level because, like you like um, he rightly said, this thing started a long time ago, you know, in 2015 December, shites were massacred because they did refuse to give uh, Chief of Army Staff right of way. So more than 700 people were said to have been killed. In, in, in 2016, judges' houses were raided, raided in the middle of the night, and all sorts of stories concocted by this same DSS. So it, this, these things are things that they become a habit, you know. And for me, I am thoroughly disappointed, but I'm not surprised because even the DSS for the last few years have been carrying out recruitment of people who cannot even speak English, you know. So what what level of professionalism do you expect? The DSS should be a very respected organization in Nigeria, you know, as in even the kinds of people that joined the DSS were quite very well qualified people, lawyers and also so people who had, had degrees and some that didn't have, but the training was so good that people, when, you, when you encounter the DSS person, you were always impressed. But from what I'm seeing, Nigeria has become a police state, uh, uh, you know, there, there's so much um, chaos everywhere and everybody's taking the law into their hands because at the end of the day, are there, are there going to be any consequences? I doubt. What, what, what do you expect to happen next? Um, now that he's been declared wanted, uh, do you expect that he will um, you know, um, present himself to the security agencies? And also, uh, there is also the conversation about you know, the fact that if Nigeria doesn't actually answer some of these questions or have a listening ear to the cries of these persons, there would always be new agitators every other you know, uh, season. 
Uh, so, so what do you, what do you, how do you think this will play out next? I, I think, I think, to be honest, it was only a matter of time before Sunday Ego was. And I said this right from the start when people were calling him a an activist and all of that. I said he's, he's, a, he's a criminal. Uh, and, and, I, and I make no apologies for saying this because, as far as I'm concerned, nobody has the right to go and tell somebody else to leave a particular area in Nigeria. If you do not want Nigeria to be as is, there are, there, there are legal ways to do it. You don't do it illegally and expect to get away with it. Some of your boys, boys have been, been involved also in, in killings. I'm not holding brief for anybody who has killed Yoruba people or anybody else, in fact, in the country. But it's the same thing I always say that if I do not support Fulani terrorists, why should I support a Sunday go going to a Fulani person's place and killing people? I wouldn't do that either. The point I'm making is that there's, there's this um, attempt at lawlessness, and the Yoruba leaders themselves should stand up and stop allowing miscreants to be the ones leading this kind of, of agitation. If Yoruba leaders feel that they want an Oduduwa Republic, as they have been saying, let them lead that revolution with intelligence, with, with some sort of, you know, leadership, not giving it to somebody who is going to carry people to go and be destroying things and doing rallies. What, what, what was the point of the rallies he's been doing, really? What has it achieved? Nothing. But in the failure of that level, of, in the failure of that, um, of that leadership, because not just in the southwest, and the southeast also, people have also said that exactly. it's the failure of uh, southeast leadership, or Hanez Zendigbo, the governors, traditional exactly. rulers, that has given rise to, you know, these persons. And so, you know, this maybe should also make us examine who exactly we call uh, leaders in, in different Absolutely. spheres across Nigeria. I, th I think, you know, you know, I am one of the people that when I look at the, the picture and I see all the agitations, I agree that Nigeria is an un unfair situation. I, I mean, I anybody mean, with half a brain cell would agree to that. However, it is the way you go about it. Do I want to say, I hear, I, I heard them say before this incident that, ah, they declared a war, it's a war, it's a war, it's a war. Do you fight a war with your mouth? Did, did Boko Haram declare war on the government or they just started attacking police stations one morning when we woke up and before we knew it, they had overrun the whole country? The problem is that, you, do you want to be a terrorist organization or do you want to be a country? You have to decide. So if Igbo has broken the law, he has to answer for it. He doesn't have to run away. Let him be a man and be brave to stand up and go to the DSS and explain his story. Okay. And so say, Look, this is what we want. And maybe from that point he can negotiate. But I, I always warn people, I said, these people will cause great problems. And then they will run away and hide. The man has dual citizenship. He will go and hide in Germany now. The people that have died have died. You know, the people that are going to continue to suffer for this will continue to suffer. The same thing with Nani Kanye when after his agitation, he ran away and took off. Left his people to continue to suffer and die. Look, we cannot continue on this path. We need what, what I call real leaders, not these characters that just come and start preaching it without you know any any basis. And because at the end of the day, even if you don't want in Nigeria, when you've preached it, even it's not like you're going to build a wall to separate yourself from the other part. So let's even imagine that you get your Oduduwa of the Afro Republic. Those people that you preach it against, what stops them from attacking you and, 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 and creating a war situation? Nothing. So it, for me, anything you don't do in love, I will never support. Hmm. So would you say this basically is, is a fault of an inaction on the part of a government to stop this issue while it was still budding. Um, you know, people talk about the Boko Haram insurgency, but this is something that could have been twatted early, early on, instead of waiting for it to become full blown. You also talk about Enam Dikano and the whole Biafra agitation that could have been twatted early on as well. And when Sunday Boho came out with his whole agenda, that that could have been stopped, but people praised him, regarded him as a hero. Some, you know, form, former politicians in Nigeria also praised him, saying, you know, he should be handled carefully. So do you, would you say that this is a, a threat of a government's inaction, just leaving th things to, till it's a little too late? Well, it, it's a bit of both. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, I wouldn't blame government all, all the way. I would also blame the leadership of those, those regions. Because as far as I'm concerned, what is the character like Ibo or Nam Nikan doing, creating a narrative and running away with it? What, are, what is the po point of Ohani the Indigo? What is the point of Afeni Ferry? They are the ones that should own the narrative because they are people who have built nations, who have built governors, who have built politicians. They should be the 
because what is the narrative? But when they leave that vacuum, of course, nature are born in vacuum, somebody else will jump in and that person will become a hero. Because the truth is that, and you think about it, in, in my lifetime, and I, I'm, I'm 50 years old, in my lifetime, I would never, even as a child, look, look up somebody like Sonja Igbo. No, I would never do it. So for you to find that citizens, even people abroad, are supporting this guy, it should tell you how bad the government has done. Because the government is allowing all sorts of characters to be able to agitate for things that do not are not even possible. That's the truth. How, how do we get an Uduwa Republic without a war? How do we get a Biafra without a war? You know, so it is a bit of both. I think the government should have just called these individual actors, as far as I'm concerned, and put them in a room and say, okay, you know, what is it that you want? We don't want you to create this mess, and this is why we don't want you to create. There's nothing, even if you fight a war, you're still going to come back to the table with that. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Mr. Koti, Koti. Sorry, sorry, hold up. Mr. Koti. First, first point of call. Okay. Mr. Koti, um, uh, when we're talking about nipping this at the bud, I'm going to refer to something I also mentioned earlier. Uh, you may yeah. nip a Sunday boho in the bud, you know, and maybe, uh, you know, jail him for attacking Fulani communities. You may nip and nam the cannon, you know, in the bud, you know, earlier. But you can't necessarily nip the feeling of injustice, you know, among the people. Yeah. And no matter how many of these elements that you you arrest or you, you know, nip in, in the bud, like, you know, has been, this, has been said, it doesn't stop the feeling of unfairness and, and injustice amongst the people. And that's why these characters keep springing up, because the people themselves feel unfairly treated. They feel the level of injustice, you know, that is spread across the country. Um, Sunday Igbo is, is, yes, you know, and people, I think we would also say that their ways are crude and very, very uneducated. And like you said, you know, some of these things don't make sense and, and then their approach is totally wrong. But it doesn't, you know, change the fact that there is a lot of people, both educated and non-educated, who feel very, very unfairly treated in the country. And so they will, there will always be some of all these things. So that's what should have been nipped in the bud. The feeling of unfairness and being unjustly treated. Yeah, I think, look, I tell you something, right? This is something I've said a lot, a lot of times. I said to, to myself, I always say that, I always ask myself that question. I say to myself, how do you solve a problem like this problem? The problem would have been solved a long time ago by never electing somebody with a mindset like this. Because there's no, there's no, even when the Niger Delta was agitating, I remember very quick, Obasanjo, who was the representative, called the Niger Delta people to Abuja. This is after trying, obviously, the show of first method, and it didn't work. Called them to Abuja to discuss with them. When uh, Good Lord Jonathan was, uh, was vice president as well, the same thing happened. The point I'm making, and these are his own people, the point I'm making is this, is that bandits have been allowed to mingle with Shegumi, go up and down, make demands, kidnap children, and they're not getting any, any, any DSS treatment, let me, let me call it that. And you are right that it is the, in, uh, the unfair situation that is creating all these agitations. But the, the, I always say that even when, if, because a madman is walking on the streets and he's naked and dancing, would you then take off your own clothes and join him? When these things happen, the first thing to do is to ask yourself, what is the way out? These, all these things are not the way out. All these agitations, all these driving full and pull away, creating revenge attacks, they're not the way out. They're not, when you ask yourself, what am I going to gain from this? The answer is chaos, more chaos. And the point is that you already know that the people in Abuja are not doing anything to help you with the full and people. Or they, they're not calling them the terrorists that are attacking you in your homes. So if you know that, then why do you want to antagonize them more? Because you know when they, if they come back to attack you, nobody's going to help you. So my point is this. Is there another way out? And perhaps that's where we should be looking. The agitations are fine. I think if you want to say, let's protest this, let's take it to a, you know, another level, let's ask for our own country, that I have no problem with whatever it is that you're agitating for. It is, however, the method. And you cannot continue to say, people like Igbo will come. Because there, there are laws in the country. We do not want people to bear arms and attack other citizens, whether they are Igbo, Hausa, or Yoruba. The same way we don't want the government to go into people's homes and kill innocent people. I mean, what is fair is fair. I would just say there are other ways about to go around this. And I think people should look right. at those ways. Mabashola Kuti, thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. Thanks for speaking with us. And uh, we hope, of course, that uh, you. You know, some of thank this information you. spreads across. Thank you. Good morning.
All right, and uh, that's where we will be wrapping things up uh, this Friday morning. And for the week, we we'll welcome you to the month of July. We hope that, of course, it's a beautiful one for you. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to catch up on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And yes, please remember to follow us on our new YouTube channel on Instagram, on Facebook, as well as our new YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa lifestyle. My name is Annette Felix saying have a great weekend. And I am Osao Gi Ogmoa. See you at nine.